But this question of fear, we're all afraid of it. And there are things in relationship to this fear that you and I have to recognize. That if you trust in God and let Him be your guide and strength, you won't have that fear. And your fear is in relationship to your trust. As your faith in God gets stronger, your fear dissipates. And as your faith in God gets weaker, your fear arises. You want to have fear dissipated and removed? Then you rise up and hold up the name of the living God and look to Him to undertake for you, and He will. It's our faith that brings victory. It's our faith that casts out fear and enables us to put our trust in the blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will worship the man of Galilee who went to a cross 2,000 years ago. And no one can take his place. No one will intercede or interfere. We will not permit it. And so it is we have faith without fear.
Sing like me.
everybody in grade four and my friends. It'll be so fun at recess. But what if you get cold and get really sick? You're too little. God doesn't have time to care about you. Oh, God doesn't care about your problems. You're too little. Bad things happen anyway, so you don't have to care about God. God isn't powerful enough to care about you or your family. Nothing can predict you from COVID. I'm busy with more serious problems. God protects my every step. Yeah. God is always with you and he'll never leave. Yeah. You said you son, his angels, and the spirit to protect you. God is so good and he takes care of me. Yeah! Good morning, church. Uh, it's great to be with you. Great to be in uh, with everybody in their homes and people looking and watching from parking lots uh, from around the city. Uh, it's great to be with you. Um, hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm doing well, although I am uh, I'm a little bit sore. Um, this last week, I started working out again. I know I, you can all tell it's obvious. It went without saying, uh, but I, I, I started working out again. And I have had a long period of inactivity. And so I decided to, instead of going slow, um, to rejoin CrossFit. And so that was a mistake. Um, 
and I've been, so I've been very sore. And the last time I remember being this sort of sore, unable to move, um, <clears throat> was many years ago when, again, after a period of inactivity, uh, I decided to, uh, instead of going slow, um, join a kickboxing class and start kickboxing. Um, and uh, I remember my first class, uh, you know, it, it was a beginner class. And uh, so it was filled with a bunch of people who were like me and didn't really know how to, you know, kickbox and what they were doing. And, uh, and you, you, but you pair up. And so I got paired up. And, uh, and then you start doing sparring and some fighting and that kind of stuff. And they walk you through it. But the guy that I was paired up with, he just kept like knocking the stuffing out of me and I would hit the mat and then we'd be back up and then, and this guy was like a ninja. And at the end of the class, uh, I went to the sensei and I was like, man, that was crazy. And uh, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, you were paired with one of our black belts. And I was like, what? Why on earth was I paired with one of, our, one of the black belts? This is a beginner class. I was like, that would have been good to know that you're pairing me with a ninja. Um, and uh, he goes, yeah, well, it's one of the last things we do before he gets his black belt is he actually ha has to go back to the beginner classes and go through some of the beginner classes because usually what happens is they get so advanced that they can forget some of the really basic techniques and some of the really basic stuff. So we send them all the way back and they, they, they go back to the basics. And uh, Anyway, I've been thinking about that this week because I've, you know, been sore these last few days. And, and I, I believe that it's something that God is actually doing with his church right now. Uh, not pairing us with ninjas, but uh, bringing us back to basics. Uh, with so much going on in the world, I believe that he's, that he's helping his church say, let's, let's strip away all the things that aren't as relevant, aren't as important, maybe things around him, and let's get right back to basics. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. Um, a scripture, there's two, a couple of scriptures I want to refer to. The first one is in Mark chapter 4, and it's a familiar one. I'm going to read it to you. I'm reading from the NIV, um, and it just says this. That day, when evening came, his he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat. So it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up rebuked the wind and the waves, and said, Peace, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Then they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. All right, so this is a, a great story, uh, and I think it, it elucidates some things that will help us as the church get back to basics. Um, Jesus makes this, it's actually kind of a covenantal statement, this word, let us. And he says, let us go over to the side. And he says, this is what we're going to do. This is the word. This is what we're going to act on. And so they left the crowd and they get in the boat with Jesus just as he was. Again, all these things are significant, but we won't go into too uh, much of it uh, this morning. And it says that a furious squall came up and waves broke over the boat. And so suddenly the, the intention of what they had set out to do was being, was being questioned. And they think, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. I don't think we're going to be able to make it. And suddenly this, this storm comes up. And this was unexpected. You would think that if Jesus was in the boat, you would think that if Jesus had authorized the trip, which he did, that there wouldn't be this giant storm. There wouldn't be all these things happening around them. And I, I'm sure you know where I'm, where I'm going with this. There was this moment there where Jesus, who was so full of peace, who was so full of uh, assurance that what he had said was going to uh, happen, was going to happen, that he was asleep. He's out cold. And... I can imagine the fear. I mean, it tells us here that, that they were terrified that the boat's going to be swamped. Many, many years ago, um, I, uh, I was on a, uh, f we took a family vacation in Cuba, and uh, I had a desire to take my dad deep sea fishing. Um, so we, you know, chartered a boat and, uh, you know, paid the money for this, uh, this, this sort of, you know, a three hour cruise uh, to, to, to take us out deep sea fishing. And, uh, 
as we, you know, you get up early and uh, it's dark and so you can't really see what the weather's li like. And uh, we get out to, the, where this, to, to where they're taking us and the marina is actually closed because the, the uh, waves are so choppy. But these guys are arguing back and forth about whether or not they can go out. And I don't know Spanish great uh, or well. I don't know, obviously don't know English well. Uh, but they, I could tell they were arguing because they didn't want to give us back the money. And so they wanted to go out anyways. And so, we, so they call up the Coast Guard and they get like special permission. There's no other boats going out, but somehow we're allowed out. And in the bay, in the, uh, it's actually quite calm. And I'm like, this isn't bad. I don't know why this is, this is the, the, the marine is closed. Uh, so anyway, we get in the boat and uh, we head out. And uh, in the bay, it's quite calm. And then suddenly you come out of the bay and it was like nothing I've ever seen. And uh, even the even the the fishermen were pretty nervous, and they were pretty afraid. And they're they're shouting back and forth, and the the waves got so bad. It was the strangest experience. The waves got so bad that the boat itself would go up like this, and then suddenly the floor that you're on is the wall, and you're having to hang on to these bars. There's no, we're not clipped in. There's no life jackets, and we're hanging on to these bars. And suddenly the floor is the wall, and then bang, it comes back down and, and up and down. And, and uh, they're trying to get the boat turned. And I remember one moment my dad said, I don't know how much longer I can hang on. And uh, so I, you know, messaged over to the guy. Uh, and uh, they just come with these like bungee cords and they just they th throw my dad in the chair and then just bungee cord him. <laughs> so, so he's stuck in his chair. And I'm like, where, uh, can I get a couple of these as well? Anyway, they managed to get the boat turned around and so that they could get us out of the, uh, out of the predicament that we were in and then they just followed the trough all the way back in and we went back into the bay and for some reason they didn't want to give us our money back uh they said that they that was it that was fishing um anyway but i can remember the the the, the fear and the panic of like if if this uh if these waves keep coming over we have a you know one or two more uh chances of this uh, boat you know, being submerged. And so, like I said, thankfully they got it turned around and got it righted. But I empathize here with these disciples who are, you know, are there panicking, thinking what is going on. And then, so they, they look though, and Jesus, it's like, they're like, he doesn't even care. And they go and they say, don't you even care? Can't you see what's going around on around us? Can't you see this furious squall? Can't you see this storm? Can't you see all of the chaos around us? And do you not even care? And Jesus gets up from his sleep and he, he says, quiet or peace, be still. And suddenly from what was inside of him, he speaks and peace comes into the environment. And then, you know, he, he's like, hey guys, where, where, where's your faith? Didn't you know that I had said that this is what we were going to do? Let us go to the other side. Where, where's your faith? Where's your faith in me? And and I've been meditating on this even for, for myself here um, because I find that there's so much that's going on around us. Uh, there's so much chaos. There's so much noise. Some of it is, is just, you know, learning what to tune into, learning what not to tune into, learning how much news is a good thing, how much social media is a good thing, how much discussion about, you know, COVID-19 or lockdown, how much of that's a good thing and how much it, it isn't. But some of it's just the challenges of, you know, of, of the, the life that we're in right now. And there's just so much noise, so many opinions, so much that we have to do. And it can be chaos. It can feel like that. Maybe I'm the only one. I, I doubt it. Uh, but, you know, where it can feel like there's just so much chaos around. And one of the things that God's been helping me to do, and I want to encourage all of us, is that the Prince of Peace actually lives on the inside of us. And he's asleep, as it were, in the boat of our life. And, and he has said that he has given us hope in a future. Um, for some of the things you, you saw in the little video that Sarah created uh, for the kids, I found personally uh, encouraging and personally challenging um, that we have a word over our life. And that my faith can actually be in him. And so because he's the Prince of Peace, I can reach and I can find peace in him. And sometimes it is a peace that passes understanding. It has to be. Because our, my understanding, I look and think there's no place that I can find peace in my understanding. But there is a Prince of Peace and his peace passes understanding. And it's been said that in order to, in, in order to lay hold of the peace that passes understanding, we have to give up our right to understand everything. 
And right now, there's, there's such a lack of understanding in the world right now that our peace can't come from our understanding. None of us have this all figured out. None of us know where all of this is going. Um, and there are a lot of opinions, and there's a lot of noise. But we have the Prince of Peace, and he passes understanding. Um, and he can... Through us, through our own voice, we can, we can be people who not just receive his peace, but we can, be binger, we can be bringers of peace as well and speakers of peace. So the question that when I read through this that I'm often asking myself is, am I going to allow the chaos of everything that's around me to come into me and for the storm to enter my inner world? Or through who Christ is, am I going to allow the peace that I can access in my inner world to actually be something that I not just receive, but speak into the outer world, into the world and into the chaos around me. And right now, the world is desperate for voices of peace, for men and women and family and children who actually have peace inside and who know that their peace doesn't come from their understanding. Their peace doesn't come from their environment. The peace doesn't come externally. The peace is actually an inside job. And that inside of us, we have peace that passes our understanding. And so we're not just, like I said, we're receivers of peace, we're walkers of peace, but we're bringers of peace and, and speakers of peace into the world that is so desperate for it. God actually speaks to us and he says this. He says, be still and know that I'm God. Those are three very helpful things, is to learn what it is to be still. To just say, no, I'm going to take moments in my day. And we may not have long, we've talked about this before, you may not have long times and long periods of inactivity, but we can be still. We can quiet ourselves, even just for a moment, to be still and to know something. To be still and not know the news, to be still and not know chaos, to be still and not try to understand, but to put our understanding on him. To be still and to know that he is God. And there's peace in that. There's peace in that for us. To be still and to know that he's God. Uh, the other scripture, which again is a familiar one to us, um, is in, uh, that I want to talk about is Psalm 127. Um, and you have heard me speak a little bit about this before. Um, but it just says this. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city... The watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early, in vain you stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. All right, so this is a, it's, it's a great psalm. I love, as you know, uh, the psalms have helped me to walk with the Lord um, Sometimes when I want to be still and know that he's God, I just take one psalm and just meditate on that. And uh, I live, like many of us, a very busy life, but I find that I can always find time for a psalm. I can always find time just to sit and to, to, to meditate on a psalm and then through the psalm just to be still and allow myself to know that he's God. And this psalm I've been meditating on regularly, as I've mentioned to you, I know already before. Um, but it says this, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. And it's this idea that both the building and the maintaining of something, actually, unless God is doing it, then it's all in vain. Unless God is the author of what we're doing with our life, uh, with the, the house of my person, the house of the building with my family, but also the house of God. And unless God is the author, unless God is the initiator, and unless he's the maintainer, then, then it says that, in fact, all the, the, the work or the toil that it says here, um, you do so in vain. And it says, in vain you get up early, in vain you stay up late. And what it's saying there is, um, out of our own natural striving, we can labor or we can toil um, outside of the God-ordained time for work. Now, I'm not talking about you know, nine to five. I know there's seasons of, of busyness. But I think we know what I, what, what I mean, that there's God who's the author sometimes of, of work, God who's the author of the toil. Um, but the, the thing that it says here, which I really like, it says he grants sleep or rest to those he loves. Or if you look in the footnotes of the NIV, it, 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 it says it this way, he gives to those he loves while they sleep. And I think this is tremendous. 
that because it, 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 it's a juxtaposition here of um, working at, in our own strength and and toiling and outside of the God ordained hours of work and it actually not coming to anything, it being in vain or realizing that he's the author of all that is important in our life. And that as we, as we only do what he's called us to do, that even while we rest, it says he can give to those, to those of us that he loves, which is of course us as children, that even while we're at rest, God can provide all that we need. And I've found this challenging um, uh, and encouraging during this during this season to just allow God to be at rest and to trust him with his church. This is a strange time. We don't need to trust him with my family, trust him with my health, trust him with the health of my family, trust him with the health of friends and uh, people that I uh, loved ones, people that I care about. But to, uh, to trust him and to be in this place of rest and to trust him that he is the author of his house. He's the author of my family. He's the author of my own life. And so because of that, he can give to me and he can give to you and he can give to us as the body all that we need. And he can do so in a place of rest. And the picture that I have is it's, it's almost like God has a bunch of stuff prepared for us in this place called rest. And I'm trying to get it in this place called toil, in this place called work, in this place called my own energy, my own striving. And I'm trying to get these things. And he's like, I've, pr- I've made provision for you, but I've made provision for you over here in this place called rest. And if you can come and rest, if you can come and be at peace, if you can be still and know that I'm God, you'll find that I've actually made provision for you already. Um, all right. Uh, there's, a, there's one last scripture. Um, well, there's a few scriptures, which I won't, I, uh, one of them I'll just, I'll just say, there's a scripture, I think it's in Romans, where, um, where he says, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And I love this. It's the God, it's a very violent image of crushing somebody, but, it, but it's called the God of peace. And peace isn't always the absence of conflict. But it's, it's the presence of who God is. It's the presence of the fullness of his shalom. And he said, there's a God of peace and he's going to crush Satan under your feet. And I, it's a beautiful picture because who's doing the crushing? Well, both. Is, is it God or is it us? And the answer is, of course, both. That in, He's going to crush Satan, but he's going to use our feet to do it. Um, and we can be bringers. We can be uh, crushers of chaos, if I can put it that way. Uh, that's a good title. Uh, crushers of chaos um, with, with the feet of peace because God lives in us. Um, Jesus says this, um, as I know we've talked about before, he says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. And as I said sometime back in the summer, summer, he doesn't say, I will make you rest. He says, I'm going to give you rest. That rest is something tangible. It's supernatural. That as we come out of weariness and come to him, that he will actually give us rest. He'll say, here's some of my rest for you. And, and we can receive that from him. Now, there's one last scripture, which I'm going to uh, read to you um, from the NIV. I've got it here on my um, device. Um, and I think if Dan can put it up on the screen, it's Romans 15, 13. And this is my prayer for myself. This is my prayer for all of us. And it says this, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe this is uh, the word of the Lord to us as the as the body of Christ always, but especially the body of Christ right now. And for us to be men and women who, who live in a place of peace, who live in a place of hope, who live in a place of joy, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of a storm all around us. Um, I'm going to read it to you now uh, from the Passion Translation. Hopefully Dan can put it up on the Passion Translation, which I've been enjoying as well. And it just says this, Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace. The word perfect there is mature, full peace. As you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his superabundance until you radiate with hope. Folks, we are a hope-filled people. 
We're a peace-filled people. We're a joy-filled people. And this morning, I just want to remind us of who lives in, inside of us, that he is the Prince of Peace. He is so, he is so um, in love with this idea of bringing peace to us that it was actually the very first thing that the resurrected Christ said to his disciples, and I'll close with this. But as, after he went to the cross and was buried, where there was, as we talked about a few weeks ago, disunity and disorder and chaos introduced into the garden, into, into our, our own psyche, into our, our spiritual relationship with the Lord, into our relational, relation, our, our relational relationship, our relationships with each other. Um, and, and, and he died, and the first thing that he, the resurrected Christ came as he approached the disciples, he just said, peace. That's what, it, that's what he came to do. He says, I want you to know peace. I want you to know shalom. So right now, if in your life, if in your family life, if even as, even as kids, if we know a lack of peace, there's peace available to us. Um, Jesus in the Gospels, when he went to his hometown, and I keep saying I'll close with this, <laughs> I'll close with this. Uh, <laughs> um, he, he went to his hometown and, uh, and it says, you know the story, it says that they took offense at him. And Beth talked to us a few weeks ago about offense, uh, which I thought was wonderful. Um, but Jesus, there was so much on offer. In the, the previous town, in the town that, ahead, that he went ahead, there was healing, there was miracles, there was forgiveness of sins, there was peace, there was the fullness of his shalom that was on offer. But because they simply looked naturally, because they discerned him with their natural eyes, they actually took something else from him. They took offense. And before I take offense, I always ask, what else is on offer? What else is there that I could take here? Do I, I don't need to take offense. But more importantly than that, for this morning's discussion, I want to look and say, when I discern Christ, am I just looking in the natural? Or if I can look spiritually, I realize that there's peace on offer. And he breathed on his disciples and he just said, peace. And this morning, that same Jesus lives inside of you and inside of me. And if you lack peace this morning, I want you to receive it. Not from bringing an understanding to all the chaos, but from the Prince of Peace that lives inside of me and lives inside of you. And just take a moment and receive his peace. Just so allow him to speak to you. Just receive it. And as you receive it, you can be a, a speaker of peace. And like we've learned in Genesis, we create worlds with the words that come out of our mouth because we're made in the image of a God who's like that. And so just begin to speak peace. And I'm encouraging myself and I'm encouraging all of us to allow the, the words that come out of our mouth in the course of a week to be ones that are full of hope, ones that are full of joy, ones that are full of peace, because that's who lives inside of us. All right. Have a great hope-filled, peace-filled, joy-filled week. And we will see you throughout the course of the week um, soon. And watch this space because we're going to be announcing when we're going to be getting back together in various places, um, hopefully this week. All right. If you've just joined us this morning and you've just realized that God has been pursuing you your entire life, then I just want to encourage you that this is a good day for you. This is a good day to decide to make Jesus the Lord of your life. The Bible says that if you repent and believe the good news that you'll be saved. And that just means repentance means just to turn away, to turn from the fact that you didn't know that God had been pursuing you your entire life and that suddenly you were just illuminated to the fact that he loves you and that he's been pursuing you and to turn towards him. And so if that's you today, I just want to encourage you just to pray this simple prayer with me. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for never giving up on me. Today, I want to make you the Lord of my life. Wash me from all my sins and make me a brand new creation. I receive your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, if that's you this morning, if you've just made that decision, we are so excited for you. Do you know that all around right now, all around you, what you can't see is that angels and saints are blowing trumpets. They're having a huge party in your honor. That God the Father, he loves you. He has a great plan and a great purpose for your life. If you've just made that, we want to celebrate with you. I just want to encourage you to click the live prayer button at the bottom of your screen or to click the connect with us button at the top of your screen and let us know that you've just made this life-changing decision to follow Jesus.